All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of What Cause Inspires You. I'm your host, Alicia Gupta, and today I have with me Ponky Mehta. I launched the What Cause Inspires You podcast as a way for students to share the service they're doing in their communities. We encourage you, like Ponky, who are making a change to improve the world, to speak up about their stories and become a leader in the movement. Ponky is a rising junior at the North Royalton High School. Thoroughly passionate about making a positive impact, she is the founder and president of Compassion During Corona, a nonprofit that aims to provide upliftment to the global community amidst these times. The website for this organization, with around 10,000 viewers and a 98% success rate in improving the mood of those who visited, has received attention from the Cleveland Clinic and the Dalai Lama. Metha's favorite subjects are math and computer science, and in her free time, she enjoys art, playing tennis, and typing tests. We are recording this presentation, and we'll post the video on YouTube by Saturday and the audio on Spotify by Friday. I'm so excited to have Plank be here today with us, especially since it's such a touchy top topic with everything that's going on. So we really appreciate everything you're doing for our community, Plank. Thank you. Why don't we start off actually by a poll um, just to gauge our audience today, um, do you ever feel you've gotten something positive out of the COVID situation? Yeah, just awesome. Launching that poll and we'll wait till the results come in. Oh, that's, that's unexpected. It's crazy. That, I mean, that's good to hear that people can find a bright line um, lighting under, under a dark cloud, right? Um, I'll just say personally for me, I would have never started this podcast series if it wasn't for the COVID situation. Uh, I mean, you never know. Uh, you can always find a positive situation out of unfortunate series. And clearly you did the same by founding Compassion for Corona, so. Yeah. Why don't we just get started um, and actually explain what your organization is to our audience. So our organization is a nonprofit called Compassion During Corona, especially with the news and these rising number of cases and just everything going on in our society right now, they all seem to have a common thread. Everything seems to point to negativity. And so as the co-founder of this organization, I wanted to fundamentally change this sort of mindset. And I set out on a mission with one thing in mind. I want to promote positivity. The results speak for themselves. We have a 98% success rate in improving the moods of the tens of thousands of people who contribute to our website. We've received attention from, like she said, um, like these amazing people like the Clinton Clinic and the Dalai Lama. And it's just that really, really good feeling to see that we as people are capable of such a huge impact that really I'm most passionate about. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and it, how does it feel when you get these, these kindness stories um, as they come in? Are you seeing that, that people are actually doing good in the society there? Yeah, so we've had kindness stories ranging from someone just playing the violin for their neighbor during the, this unfortunate time. And other, other kind of stories range from just donating food to underdeveloped countries. So it's definitely had a huge impact. But I'd say like if I had to choose the best one, that would be a little hard. They're all unique in their own way. And um, I'd say, but I'd still say if I had to choose, my favorite would be someone from India who was very much concerned for the well-being of the nature around him. So the Indian summers are ruthless and people quite literally see birds dying on streets because of a lack of water. What this man did was he took an empty plastic cans and made bird feeders out of them. We can take a look in the video how he did this. Yep. I'll screen share that up right now. Oh, let me share with audio as well. Alrighty.
that's such a that's such a moving story. Um, and I will say that that kindness definitely comes in all sorts of forms. Um, what they did was purely amazing, but it even comes in the form of checking up on your neighbors during this time. I know I live right next to um, a couple, an elderly couple, um, and they they obviously are more susceptible to the COVID-19 pandemic, so they're being really careful about getting groceries for them. So even as simply as um, if I did go out to get groceries or order it, uh, I'd ask them, do you want anything? Um, just to lower their chances of risk. So it comes in all forms, but I think on the flip side of that, negativity definitely brews negativity. Um, and sometimes amidst a pandemic, it's really hard to get your mind out of that negative state. So being able to actually share kindness stories, I think will just promote more kindness in society. So simply amazing. But um, what is the broader context to which your efforts fit into? Oh, Ponthi, I think you're on mute. Can, am I here? Okay. Yeah, all good. So I would definitely say this would be promoting positivity, not just during a time of crisis, but overall. I really became fascinated with this concept after reading a study which essentially said that positivity increases your lifespan, lowers your risk of heart disease by 66%, and tons and tons of more health benefits just for your overall health and well-being. It just seems like such a simple concept that so many of us overlook. And especially in our day and age, there's an insurmountable increase in the number of people with anxiety, people who are stressed and depressed. All this has the underlying root cause of a negative mindset. I just felt that because of these rising numbers, clearly there's something our generation is doing wrong. And that's the broader context that my efforts fit into. Awesome. And obviously, um, with the COVID situation, there's a bunch of different efforts that we can play a part in, right? Like you said, um, people can make food shelters for birds, or we could go check up on our neighbors, or it's simply having that positive mindset and telling your friends that it's going to be okay. Um, but a lot of people don't know where to start, I think. Um, like we mentioned before, once you're in that negative mindset, sometimes without the right resources and an outlet, it's hard to get out of it. Um, and it's hard to find a positive lining with so many negative consequences piling up onto each other. So what would you say is the most important aspect to act upon during this situation? Um, I feel like everyone, each and every single one of us has their own unique way of coping. For me personally, this, is, this means finding out everything I could about COVID from the biological perspective. I've read countless articles on this and as strange as it sounds, it's something I enjoy. But at but as the same time, I quickly realized the need for my community. I realized not everyone was going to go out of their way and read research articles to educate themselves about the disease. And also people just don't have the background to do this. So I created a video that explained everything I had learned, but in much simpler terms so that everyone would understand. Now I felt that this crucial knowledge would no longer be limited to the researchers that have developed this, but in fact, it could be spread throughout our population. We can watch it. Um, let's pull that up right now. What exactly is a virus? After all, every living thing on our planet has them. You know, you and I, the plants, chihuahuas, they're basically everywhere. Well, viruses work by injecting their genetic material into the cells of living things, effectively hijacking the host cell to become a virus producing machine to create even more viruses to infect even more cells, and the loop goes on. They're basically biological zombies. Now I keep hearing that the coronavirus was transmitted to us from bats, but what does that really mean? What exactly is the relationship between bats and human diseases? All this has to do with zoonotic infections, which are viruses transmitted from one animal species to a realm. They make up up to 75% of new and emerging human infectious diseases, including HIV, MERS, SARS, Ebola, swine flu, the coronavirus, and the list goes on. 
This is why it's super important to know how they work. So to help you better understand, let me tell you a story. There once was a little bat named Bill who carried SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 as the common folk would say. Now you'd expect Bill to get sick because after all, SARS-CoV-2 would cause us as humans to get sick, hence this massive pandemic. But plot twist, Bill remains a healthy little bat. What exactly is going on? Well, Bill's immune system is a lot different from ours, which allows him to carry a whole host of different viruses without really getting sick, making Bill a reservoir host that can end up infecting one of us. But transmission of viruses from other animals to us isn't that easy. Which brings me to my next point. Not everything can enter the human cell. Viruses are constantly mutating inside the reservoir host most of which are neutral mutations that are completely harmless and don't do anything. But a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of them have the ability to enter and infect a human cell. Contact with this can lead to a zoonotic infection. But there's more to it. If the virus is too successful, the new host would die out and it would no longer be able to spread. But if it infects the host at just the right infection fatality ratio, which is a fancy way of saying the number of deaths divided by the number of infections, then it's able to spread more and more and more. This zoonotic spillover is the same thing that happened in the case of coronavirus, and it's the same reason why our social distancing and quarantine protocols are so important. Right now, we're amidst a massive global pandemic thought to have been transmitted from none other than a bat. So there you have it, the virologic relationship between bats and human diseases. So this was just my example, but there's, there's so much that you guys can do and always just put that need for that community before you set out on your mission and you can have a very huge impact that way. That, that's honestly amazing. And I loved the animations on the video. Um, simply great way of explaining exactly what the whole Corona situation is. I know when this first started, um, so many myths were going on. I was actually in my AP bio class uh, and our teacher dedicated our entire class for myth busting. He said, what have you, what have you heard? And we all just kind of talked about it. But I think that just goes to show that when something like this happens um, and there's not proper articles or people aren't actually educating themselves for whatever reason, you have a lot of, I guess, knowledge, information being thrown at you, not all of which is completely accurate. And that can actually lead to a more negative mindset than anything, right? If you're believing all of these different yeah, myths, sure. like I can get more sick than I really, that you really can. Um, obviously be careful, put on your mask. But my point is that negative mindset, right? It can really dig a deep hole. And Pankti, I'm not like you, and I don't like reading medical studies. <laughs> um, but that's just me, right? I, if I keep reading medical studies, I think I'd be able to diagnose myself with every single disease out there, because that's how paranoid I get. But that just goes to show that everyone does cope in different ways, definitely. Um, I think my biggest way of coping was the mentality that things happen for a reason. And that's kind of a mantra that I have lived with my entire life and is, is just my personal way of coping. But for our audience out there, there's a bunch of different ways that we can get through the situation together. So what are some other ways um, that everyone can cope with the situation? So I feel like that's just what makes us all unique. That for me, it was reading medical research articles, but it it's so like our diversity is our strength and there's so many people with so many different perspectives and that have gone through so many different experiences that they have, they might, they might do like one person might find fishing a way to cope and someone might find like walking through nature trails as their way of coping. But I feel like we're all so unique and that's what makes the world turn. That's kind of what makes us all special at the end. It's an overused cliche, but it's true. <laughs> that is completely accurate. I mean, the whole purpose, our founding principles of the United States was celebrating diversities um, and, and that whole melting pot. So I think if we can do that with our mindset as well, and then we can definitely prosper. And it's really just about understanding one another and helping one another. Um, but with that, I think we'll conclude our interview section of the podcast with 
Tonky, I'm wondering if you have any advice for all of our other aspiring social entrepreneurs and youth change makers out there. So I'd like to end this by saying that no one is too small to make a change. Do what you feel passionate about. You'd be surprised by how much even one person stepping up can accomplish. Wow, that's, that's so true. Honestly, just go for it. Anyone with an idea um, or a kindness story that they want to enact on, I think the biggest thing is just go for it, do it, and you will be helping someone out there in the world. Even if that's just a compliment, um, I guarantee you it will make someone stay. But thank you so much, Pompey, for being here with us today and sharing compassion during Corona. Yep. I just had one last thing I'd like to add, which is um, if you guys are interested in our organization and what we do, we're definitely open to if there's anything, if there's a kind of story any of you guys would like to share, because it's just so uplifting and so empowering to all of us that I feel like stuff like this is definitely worth sharing. Definitely. And Pompey's email will be on all of our social media posts. So be sure to go to our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn um, on Humanity Rising or What Cause Inspires You to find more about compassion during Corona and possibly even submit a kindness story. I will also um, be posting my email address in the chat. Um, if anyone has questions about What Cause Inspires You, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we love to hear from new youth who are taking actions in our community. And you can also apply to be a speaker on this podcast, just like Ponfi. Um, and speaking of future podcasts, next week on Wednesday, September 9th, at the same time, I will be live with William Gurley. But for now, I will open up the floor to questions for Ponfi. So feel free to type them in the Q&A box and she will answer. Pongthi, honestly, I'm still, I'm still trying to process that video. I think that was super informative. It's, it's mm -hmm. spent, I've spent like so long on it. It was, it was just like, I, I, spent, I basically it. spent my whole summer doing it. And at first I didn't know anything about how animations worked or anything, but um, I ended up just kind of like watching YouTube videos and it's surprising how much you can learn off of that. So that was just, <laughs> it's like your own form of Khan Academy. And honestly, I think yeah. we needed that. Um, just to kind of dispel some truth on this whole yeah. situation. But we actually did have a question from Devin come in. Go ahead, what were you gonna say? Hi, Pongti, I'm Devin. One way I spread positivity is through social media by posting positive affirmations. There are, are there other simple ways that youth can show kindness on social media? Um, yeah, I feel like there's definitely ways and there's, it's just, I can't even name something that's so specific to you that for some, for one person, it might be like complimenting someone's outfit on their Instagram post. And it's just these little, really tiny things that make people's day and make them feel less negative about themselves and make them feel confident. And it just, it's just these tiny, tiny things that help spread positivity. It could be as simple as FaceTiming your friend, honestly. Definitely. Um, and kind of back to what we were talking about with the whole kindness stories. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other amazing things that I've, I've seen people do. And I think one of them is someone actually collected food um, and desanitized it for homeless shelters. And I thought that was really important because oftentimes during a pandemic, we can start to think about ourselves, right? It's, it gets into this kind of survival game. And we don't think about the people who in general needed help before the pandemic even started. So actually going out of their way and continuing their efforts to provide for the homeless and desanitize the outside of the food for them. I just found that really remarkable. For sure. And um, if this is like, again, like a biological perspective, I really, I'm really, I'm very much into this, but um, if you ever think about it, um, hand sanitizer, which we're all using to kind of like, help diffuse the spread um it's actually like 99.9 .9 .9 it kills bacteria so it's antibacterial but covid is a virus so it i feel like it doesn't really make any sense but that was just like what what i was thinking so yeah that makes sense i it i think it's a, it gets a bit complicated in terms of again that relaying the information to the public yeah. 
Um, but we have two more questions and then we'll wrap it up for today. The first question is also by Devin. Um, he asks, what has been your favorite moment during this experience? So I definitely say my favorite moment is when we put up the website and there weren't that many people contributing because we hadn't like made that name for ourselves. But once people started, once that snowball started rolling, it was insurmountable. It was like such a positive impact and you could really, really see that positivity with people's kindness stories and people were going out of their way to do these things and people were being inspired by other people's kindness stories. And it's just, there's like, there's 10,000 people viewing this and there's like, it's helped them so much. And just to have that internal satisfaction that you've done your part for the community that has nurtured you. So that was, I'd say that would be the highlight of my experience for sure. Definitely that, that sense of, um, I guess, not even satisfaction for yourself, but to see what others are doing, that satisfaction in our community to know that people are making an effort to make things better. Um, and finally, to wrap it off, I think we'll go back to that video that you had played. I think everyone enjoyed it a lot, but Jonathan asks, hi, Pankti, thanks so much for presenting tonight. It was really good to hear the information you gave. What software do you use to make your animations? So this was Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects, but it's, it's beware. It's really hard to use initially, but once you get the hang of it, um, you can definitely do it. Thank you so much, Pompey, for all the information that you relate to us today. I urge all of our um, audience members out there to really go check out Compassion During Corona, submit your stories, um, and tonight, go do something nice for somebody, even if it's your people living within your house. Um, guaranteed, it'll make a positive impact on them. But that's all we have for today. So I hope to see you guys all at our future podcasts.